Hi, I'm Andy the Northern Diver and welcome to my weekly blog. This week we're talking about cameras and video equipment. When I first started, it was very important to me and my wife to sort of document how we progress through certain diving qualifications. So what I've done is I've gathered together quite a lot of different types of, of some, some more basic to more advanced type of video and photography equipment to give you an example of what you can buy and get value for your money. When I first started, we bought something like this, a little action camera. Most common brands that, that are on the market, as I'm using to video this now, is my GoPro. We had it on a wrist mount. What I found with this was it's quite easy to get on. But whilst in the water and you, you're doing any movement around, it was quite easy for that to just come off, which was the bit that held on to the GoPro. And to get it back on was a faff. So it was unstable, the video footage. It wasn't perhaps as easy as I'd like. So I would discount using any sort of action camera mounted on your wrist. I much prefer, whilst this is in its normal housing, such as this, the clear housing that comes on top of this, your normal GoPro housing, I'd sometimes just put a little bolt snap through there and I can clip it onto my kit, pull it out, take a picture as and when I want it, you know, wanted to take one, or I can hold it nice and steady in front of me as I'm moving along, videoing a fish or some marine life, and then clip it back on, it's out the way, it's small and very out the way. The next sort of thing that we progressed onto was getting lighting, and I find it annoying when I, I try to use my torch, which would have a sort of burst of light that come out left and right, and then a sort of central core of light, and that was extremely bright. So whatever we were trying to take a picture of, or video, was too brightly lit up by that torch. So what I'm using on my GoPro now here, underneath, is just a floodlight. There's no spot to it. And I find that gives a much sort of brighter light to the image you're trying to take, rather than that central core of ultra bright light that just bleaches out the whole picture. So, what I've just most recently bought for my GoPro is this. So it's got two two sort of torch looking lights, but they're not the video lights. So as you turn them on, you'll notice they're quite bright, but they're just, they're just a floodlight, not a spotlight. So it's ideal because you can hold it left and right, get quite stable on it. Um, but it's also got the Goodman type handle. So should you be doing anything else if you've got um, a reel underneath your hand, like a cave reel or anything else, it's, it's quite easy and secure, sort of, it's quite easy to hold whilst doing something else. So you could, whilst not using it, you could be holding onto a shot line, you could be winding up your reel, um, sort of any sort of task, I think. It's, it's got a nice big chunky handle so you can get you know, a gloved hand through there, no problem. It's not adjustable up and down, so if you've got a tiny hand, perhaps it's not the most perfect one for you. But by tightening up these on the side here, you can adjust your lights to, to be focused on what you're looking at. I think that's a cracking piece of kit, although much like any dive kit for underwater, and certainly depth rated, they're quite expensive. This retails at about 250 quid. That's with both torches, without batteries, and without the GoPro, so that's just what you see there without that. Cracking bit of kit though, um, one of our friends used something very similar when we were in the Red Sea this summer, and his footage was brilliant, really stable so you can move it along. Obviously if you're doing that with it, it's not going to be very stable, but you become more stable using it like that with your hands out in front and whatnot. So for your GoPro, that's, that's probably the better light for videoing. So ideal, whilst you're using a GoPro action type camera, are these sort of coloured lenses you can buy. So we've got a sort of darker one that you put on. If it's very bright light well, whilst you're out, this will just dull it down too much so it doesn't sort of bleach what you've videoed. We've got a purple one here. That's ideal for when we're in um, sort of green water. That'll just add that little bit of red that gets reduced down as we, as we dive. Then we've got a red filter. Okay, we'll use that predominantly in blue water where the, the sort of red colours get bleached the deeper we go. And then the last one that comes with it is the sort of amber yellow colour one. 
that's when it's not the best light in the world so it, it actually brightens up your image so maybe late at night or quite dark deep water um, or even as a night dive that'd be ideal for there so options for carrying your GoPro you can buy these sort of bags for about 20 quid off Amazon or eBay that come with loads of stuff so this would just bolt into the bottom of the housing just clip it onto there you could carry that if you were to let go it would upend and it would float to the surface nice big yellow boy that would stand out quite easily to the boat or, or if you were at sea as such that would get seen quite easily um, one of my preferred things I've only bought it recently um, was an extendable sort of selfie stick kind of thing so quite similar the, the housing mounts on the top but you can take some quite good shots by of yourself whilst videoing with with sort of marine life so if you look at our video of where we weren't the farms that I was always on at the end of these videos I was using this throughout that so I was holding it up getting pictures of the sort of jellyfish around me the seals behind me stuff like that so certain different bits of kit there that you go with a GoPro just depending on the kind of dives you're doing what I wouldn't be encouraging is you to wear the GoPro on the top of your mask because when you breathe out the exhaust bubbles will go straight past and it becomes annoying so you're not going to get any good video footage added to that you can't see what you're videoing because the screen is not accessible to you whereas on this now this video I'm making I've got my iPad there showing me what's being filmed so I can see whether I'm sat in the right place or I've got everything you know and, and if you're thinking you're videoing something and you've completely missed it you'll be devastated when you get back if you're a beginner diver which is what I've sort of aimed these videos for I mean your, your typical sort of action cameras whether it be the sort of small GoPro hero session which this one's dead now because a load of submersible this only went to, to about four meters before it drowned um, so I wouldn't recommend buying one of these to go underwater but something like this the cheap you can buy them for about 40 quid with a case and a couple of clips the, the sort of copy of the GoPro they're, they're all right if you're just diving recreationally so about 20 meters absolutely fine whereas the one I'm using now the Hero 4 phenomenal I've had that down to 50 meters to cracking photographs with it still pictures sometimes make the battery last longer it's not going to be the battery that will limit how much footage you can take with something sort of similar to these kind of cameras but it will be the memory card you know I've picked this up for less than 15 quid it's 128 gigabytes which is phenomenal for less than 15 quid so you could have that on pretty much for an entire dive on video and you probably wouldn't feel it unless you're using 4k video so for 15 quid get yourself one of them ideal when you get out the water you can just ping it all over onto your phone or to your computer and uh, and then wipe it all again cracking idea but certainly to document any of your, your dives or to take pictures of stuff that you know that's going to be there and um, take pictures of your friends to keep your Instagram or your Facebook up to date any of these will do so recently uh, I went diving a couple of weeks ago I mean, one of my friends has just paid about the same sort of money about 250 quid it's the same price as a GoPro or the more basic ones so the GoPro 4 he's bought this torch and it's quite a bright torch you've got certain different options if you look there's three lenses so you've got a floodlight which would be ideal for videoing you've got a, a, a spotlight which would be ideal ideal for a night dive to identify things to, to some of your dive buddies perhaps but it's all, also got the means of taking a video or a photo, a photo so as you can see the black lens at the front here that is the photo lens so as long as you're aiming these buttons sort of at the 12 o'clock position the picture will be nice and straight if you just have it left or right um, I'll post a picture now which is what I took of, of my friend off this camera out of the water a couple of weeks ago good bit of kit for me it's a bit bulky as a torch it's not something I would want to take in the water but for what it does um, and it suits him he's got pockets in his BCD that he can store it in it's quite heavy but it comes with a rechargeable battery comes with a, a little memory card in there that fits inside so it's all watertight cracking bit of kit he's got a little snap bolt on there clip it up on his kit when he's not using it or even if something was to come past, he could just flick it up, take a picture, and put it back down. I think that's quite a good idea. Expensive for its idea, but good nonetheless. Now, this is one of my good dive friends. This is her setup. So it's a very small, compact camera. 
that fits in an underwater housing. This is made by Fujifilm. Yeah, it's made by Fujifilm. So it's, it's sealed. So it's just a normal camera that you can take on your holidays, taking photos of whatever. And then it fits in this underwater housing. It's depth rated, I should suggest, to about 40 meters, which is well within the recreational range. And what it comes with is this arm that we can attach certain things to, different lights and, and whatnot. But to it, to take different pictures, it comes with what's called a wet lens. So you can take that off and, and just take your normal shot. And then if you add what's called a macro, for instance, a picture that you wanted to take, so something very, very close up, yeah, you can mount this back on there. You can take a picture, take it back off. This mounts back up here. And go and shoot another wide angle, perhaps like a picture of a wreck or a couple of your friends taking a, a, a sort of group photograph. Brilliant idea that because you can change from one scene to another quite easily by having the two sort of lenses available to you. And I'm, you know, I'm assuming you can buy several different styles of this. So you could have maybe on another arm or in your pocket or whatever, or swap from one to another from that that housing here. It's a cracking idea because it's got this extra arm on here so you can have this light on. She's put on a couple of clips so she can clip it to herself and it'll hold it quite tight. Once it's, once she wants to use it, she can unclip the um, the pinch clip and she can extend, get the picture and then clip it back up and put it away. And, you know, she gets some cracking photographs from that. In some respects, these are, are, are better because you can change underwater, but perhaps not as good as when you look at a camera that's like this. So this is your normal compact camera. Well, these have lenses that you can remove. So you can take this one off, which is your normal standard lens. We can then put a macro lens on there, which is for zooming right in. And then I've got a wide angle variant, that clip on there. The problem with doing this is you can't do them underwater. The lenses are likely to be a lot better quality and you can get a lot more from them than the wet lenses. But the problem is you need to know straight away what you're going to be taking photographs of before you get in the water. So if you're going to take a picture of a wreck, perhaps, you would want a nice wide angle lens. If you're going to take pictures of marine life on a coral reef, you'd perhaps want a macro lens or your standard sort of zoom lens because you're going to take pictures of sort of bigger fish, but you don't need it, such a big wide angle. And then comes back to lighting. How on earth can we get what we want to take a picture of bright enough? So if you look at this camera setup now, you can see this is the underwater housing with a, a dome shaped port on there. So we've got two types, we've got a flat port, which is ideal for macro photography, or the dome fisheye port, which is ideal for sort of wider angle photography. Added to that then, we've got the means of the flash that's on the camera can be fired down these fiber optic cables into these external flashes. They're also known as strobes, so we can move them in and around an object just by undoing the little arms and this will stretch out and you can get sort of lots of different angles of light to give you a different picture only ideal for closer um, shots rather than your big wide angle stuff so if you wanted to take a picture in, inside a cave for instance you'd need to take some sort of lighting system in there to brighten that up whereas these if it was right in front of me if I was trying to take a picture of my hand for instance or better still Got the Grinch with it being Christmas. I was trying to take a picture of that. So put it in front of the camera. I perhaps move my strobes around it to the side. And that would negate any sort of particles that are in the water being hit by that flash. These would just light this up. So likely the, the focus from the camera would only be on the, the, the thing I'm trying to take a picture of. So in terms of cost, you could be well looking at a couple of thousand when you're getting this sort of set up. Um, it floats because we've got these float arms, so you could almost have it so it's neutrally buoyant. So if, wherever you are in the water, you just let go and it shouldn't really move. Again, much like in my friend's camera here where they've got this sort of connector to clip it to your kit. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong at all in having that because should something fail on that, the vast majority of the money, I suggest, is going to be in your camera. So if any of these fall off, so be it. But you probably wouldn't want to lose your camera. You can pick up a lot of stuff like this now, secondhand, off, off Facebook sales or, or eBay. 
but I'd be very careful to make sure that what you are buying is waterproof. So the housing that my GoPro came in, if I was to buy a new one of these and hadn't tested it, the best thing you can do is fill that full of tissue, take it on your first dive to a known depth, come out, if the tissue's wet, it's clearly not working. Same with um, the underwater housing for quite expensive cameras. I'd test them first. You know, the bath is never gonna be deep enough, but if you take them on a known dive site that you've been to before, you know the depth, fill it full of tissue, and then if the tissue's wet when you pull it out, you know that there's a leak. It might just be an O-ring on the door, but it might be something more serious. But better to just get the inside of this wet and a bit of tissue than your extremely expensive camera. So what I've laid out on my bench here now, I've got two torches. Um, this one, the bigger one, this is an actual underwater torch. This one here on the left, the smaller one, that is one of my um, dive lights for my GoPro. So my aim is, is to show you the difference between one being a floodlight and one being a spotlight. So I'll turn them both on. So if you look at how that's lit, the area up here, it's just one great big light, isn't it? As in one area tends to be flooded. I turn this one on, you see quite clearly the difference between the two. So one's got an extremely bright area. So let's use it as an example. So I'm going to put the GoPro Hero Session. Imagine we're trying to video that. Look how bright that torch is. Brilliant. Further away I come and put the light onto the GoPro. Still bleaches it out for you to see. Take the spotlight away and use the floodlight. Unless I get really close, it doesn't bleach it out. So imagine if we had a couple of them, and that's something we were trying to video. It's not going to bleach it out so much. And you bring your spotlight back in. Although it lights the area up much better. You can't actually see what you're looking at. So if you compare the two, one versus the other, that's the reason why we need a video light over a spotlight. So as an example now, I've now got my GoPro on a selfie stick, so we can move around. You can take a picture of pretty much whatever you want. It remain quite stable. But you can get in and around an object and have a look, perhaps without disturbing it so much. Get right in on the base of my Christmas tree. Look at all the camera equipment. Imagine this was a coral reef. You don't have to go too close to something that perhaps might have your hand off. So what I've tried to cover is the different types of photography equipment that I've used since we first started diving right up to modern day. The main difference between the latest piece of dive kit that I'm using, which is the sort of bigger underwater camera that's got the, the, the strobes on, is mine has lenses that are not suitable for being changed whilst in the water. Whereas like I said earlier, my friends, she's got the wet lenses so you can change from one to another whilst on a dive should you need to. So we've gone through um, from that sort of GoPro type action cameras which are ideal for every kind of diver. Certainly most of the better instructors that I know will use one throughout a training session because you can just flick it off dead quick, take a video of what the, the student's doing so later on you can show them and hopefully they'll learn from what you've shown them. We've then moved on to this, this sort of option that comes in a torch. Quite a good idea. Not for me, but I think it's a good idea on the whole. We've looked at this newer form of GoPro, which is not waterproof at all. And unfortunately, although it's rated to 10 meters, it's not actually covered under the warranty of GoPro. So just be quite aware that should you buy one of these thinking you can get it to depth or, or, or the other kind that comes in the underwater housing. Although they're rated to 45 meters, they're not actually going to pay out should it bust. So you might have to make sure you've got the right insurance. And then we moved on to the sort of more amateur type photography. Very expensive. You know, you're talking minimum of a couple of hundred quid to start off and it can take you to a couple of thousand quite quickly. But enjoy your underwater photography. Get some lessons in your buoyancy and trim. Get nice and stable in the water. And once you've done that, no knees on the bottom. Don't be standing on coral reefs or kneeling in silt because you'll just ruin the dive for everybody else. And take as many pictures as you can and enjoy them. But take them for you. Don't take them to try and copy somebody else or to be somebody else because it's, it's what's 
fun for you. Obviously, if you like other people's photos, use them as an example. But certainly, enjoy your photography, and and hopefully, you know, you'll get some really good results. Remember, you need the kind of lighting that's that's suitable for videos or for, for still pictures. So either the strobes or an actual floodlight rather than a spotlight. So if you've enjoyed everything we've covered and it's been of some use to you. Don't forget, there's always a like button at the bottom. If you can give us a thumbs up, that'd be fantastic. If, you've got any, if, you, if you do find our uh, videos of some use to you, there's a subscribe button that's just popped up now. There's a video from this summer when we went diving with the seals in the farms. And at the top will be last week's videos, which covered the second stage regulators, different kinds that they are. Hope to see you on the next one. I'll see you on Instagram.